Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage international best-selling author and noted authority on leadership, Mark Sanborn. It boils down to what I call the three loves. See if this doesn't apply to you. I bet it does. Number one, I go back to this guy, Lindsey Owen Jones, when he was the president of L'Oreal, Forbes magazine, said, what is the secret of L'Oreal success? Like you guys, multi-billion dollar company. How could he reduce it down? But he gave the best answer I'd ever read. He said, if there is a reason why we are successful, it's because we love this business a little bit more than our competition. That's the first love. Do you love what you do? By the way, you do not love it when it is easy. You enjoy it when it's easy. You love it when it's hard. Think about it. We enjoy easy. But when you look back on your career, it's going to be the stuff that, that challenged you. It's going to be the problems that you overcame, the difficulties that you and your team surmounted. That's going to be your greatest source of pride. So number one, I hope you love what you do. Number two, I hope you love who you do it with. Got good news for you, you don't have to like everybody on your team, but you gotta love them. And I define love as treating people with dignity and respect, regardless of how they make you feel. You say, Mark, is there a deal breaker? Is there sometimes when you shouldn't love somebody on your team? Only one that I know of, and that is when they are not as committed to the success of your colleagues and customers and lows as you are, then they should not be on the team. If they are not as committed to the success of their colleagues and customers and lows as you are, that is the deal breaker because you can put up with a lot of diversity and difference in worldview if you share that commonality. That's the second love, loving who you do it with. And the third love, folks, you can see this coming a mile away because you're a smart group. I hope you love who you do it for, the people who could go anywhere, but they chose your store, they chose to do business with you, to give you their time, to give you their money, they walked in, you should love them. John Howard helped her break his record. Transformative leaders don't just transform themselves. The best transformative leaders transform others. They transform the people they work with. They transform the people they work for. They transform the people who work for them. And they transform the customer, the client, the hospital system, and the patient in the marketplace. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how the best get better. Leadership is an invitation to greatness we extend by example. It's the ability to, to work with a leader and know that because you work with him or because you work with her, you are a better person. That's the leadership test. Who or what is better because of you? Is your store, your area, your community, can, can you see evidence that because of the influence you've had, people have grown, the community has been enriched, customers have been better provided service and help that they need to create their success? You will dominate the marketplace when you can demonstrate to your clients that by choosing you, they will be more successful than if they had chosen one of your competitors. And I don't care what market space you're in. Don't ever confuse ambition with leadership. I don't have anything against ambition. I'm a capitalist. As long as it's ethical and legal, I'm a big fan of ambition. But ambition benefits the person. Leadership benefits the greater good. Uh, we live in a culture that is obsessed with fame. Fame is about what you get. Greatness is about what you give. And 20 years later, I remember nothing else about the hotel. Why? Nobody remembers same. They remember different that is valued. And that is the goal of leadership. That's a goal of the Fred Factor is, is to make same different in a way that people say that's really cool and they tell others. I sat in the back of the room and I was reminded, as I had done my research prior to coming, that this is 70 years since 1951, that you've not been imitators or emulators, but originators. And you're going from monitoring to predictive medicine, that you've developed a digital health platform. You're the fastest growing in the market space, 2x growth in four years, not the biggest yet. And I, I thought to myself, you know, as an outsider looking in, if at this point in the program, you aren't excited. If you aren't emotionally invested in what you just saw, you should check your own pulse. <laughs> because here's my final point, 
in Las Vegas, Nevada. If you love what you do and you love who you do it with and you love who you do it for, whether or not you ever read my book or heard me speak, I can tell you with good authority, you are already a Fred. Thank you and Godspeed. Leadership, organizational culture and customer service have changed more dramatically over the past 24 months than in the past 24 years. Today, leaders need to act quickly and correctly to the new challenges they face. The solution? Audiences want to know what's important now, but they also need to be reminded of what always matters. The principles and fundamentals of good leadership and good customer service are timeless. And I've made it my life's work to teach both the timeless truths and the timely tactics. I've worked with numerous global brands, organizations, and associations, and have delivered more than 3,000 presentations all over the world. I'm a best-selling author of eight books, and am consistently recognized as one of the top leadership experts in the world. The reason for my success is simple. I have a passion for providing ideas that work in the real world, and sharing my expertise in an engaging and entertaining way. I'd love to share what I've learned with you and your team.